In a previous video, we saw that games rely on two kinds of collision shapes to make melee attacks feel great – hitboxes and hurtboxes. Hitboxes deal damage, while hurtboxes receive damage. In this video, you will learn to code both in Godot. We'll start by coding the hitbox, then the hurtbox, and we'll use them to deal damage to enemies. This video is sponsored by our course Learn to Code from Zero with Godot. More on that at the end of the video. In the description, you'll find a link to download the project files I will be using in this video. It contains the finished code for this project, but also the sprite that uh, I'm using here. So if you want to follow along, I invite you to download it. What we need to do is to create new kinds of nodes that represent hitboxes and hurtboxes. I'm going to double click on my sort to open the corresponding scene and want to do something like this. When I press Control A, I want to be able to uh, search for a hitbox node and just create it. We have one done in this project, but we're going to code our own from scratch. To achieve this, we have to create a script file. So I invite you to right click on the practice folder, click new script, and enter a name like my hitbox, which I'm going to copy and click create to create the script. Double click the script file to open it in the editor. And the first thing that we want to do is to set the type to extend area 2D. Areas are the basic kind of node that detects physics interactions in Godot. Like the player is in front of a chest, you press a key, you open the chest. Uh, but they are perfect for things like hitboxes and hurtboxes. Then to create nodes based on this script, we have to create a new line that uses the class and the school name keyword followed by the name we want for our node. And as soon as you've done that, you can already go in the editor, uh, press Control A and search for my hitbox and you'll see the node is right there. All right, so let's keep coding. Uh, we want to do two things. First, we're going to create a variable to represent the base damage of our hitbox because the hitbox is responsible for dealing damage. So it should hold uh, the damage. And then we're going to change the default properties of that node. And that's why we're making a script. We'll keep it simple in this video, but you can build upon what we'll do here. Now, let me create an area 2D node to talk about physics, layers, and masks. If you go to the inspect on the right and expand the collision category, layers and masks appear. Uh, these control what this node will collide with. And for um, our hitboxes and hurtboxes, what we want is for them to just detect one another. Precisely, we want hurtboxes to detect hitboxes, and that's it. And so typically, you change these layers and masks um, to filter the collisions in your game, right? Uh, we named the first layers in this project for you. So layer one, we called it the game world, and layer two, is going to be for hitboxes, right? Um, and so what we want precisely is for the hitbox to be on layer two and to have no mask. Why? Because the layer represents the category uh, of physics objects this node is part of, and the mask represents the category of physics objects it will detect. That's the general idea between uh, behind these two. So if I go back to my hitbox script, I'm going to do these two things. Collision layer, I want to set it to layer two. Uh, now you have to be careful about that because collision layers and masks work with binary numbers. And so uh, you want to uh, set it to layer two, you want to assign the value two to the collision layer property. Now the way you know which value to use is by hovering over the collision layer. You can see it says bit one, the value is two, but it worked with powers of two. so uh, bit 3, or, or bit 2 rather, uh, would be value 4, uh, and so on. Then it gets to 8, uh, and uh, 16, and so on, right? And for the collision mask, sorry, I'm going to get back to my hitbox script, and for the collision mask, we want a value of 0, which will turn off all the collision masks. So that's our uh, hitbox script done. Then we need the hurtbox, the one that we will attach to enemies to receive damage. For that, right click on the practice folder again, create a new script, and we're going to call it my hurtbox. 
This one is also going to extend from area 2D. And we're going to give it a class name of my herd box to be able to create nodes based on this script. Okay, so <clears throat> this one will work a bit differently. Uh, we're going to create an init function and we want it to detect the hitboxes and to receive damage. For that, we're going to set the collision layers and masks to complement the hitbox. So we'll say collision layer is equal to zero and collision mask is going to be equal to two. This will allow this node to detect my hitbox. Then we will use a signal so that when a hitbox hits a herd box, we detect that and deal damage. I'm going to uh, add the ready function and call connect area entered. I'm going to connect it to this node and uh, I'm going to call on area entered when a hitbox hits this herd box. And you're going to see a couple of interesting tricks here. Um, I'm going to define that function and it's going to receive an area node through the area entered signal. Now we can do better than that. We can say, I want to receive a hitbox. And the type of that is going to be my hitbox. Why do we do that? Well, this will make it so if anything other than a node of type my hitbox touches this area, the hitbox will have a value of null automatically. And so we can safely do something like if hitbox is equal to null, we return from the function and avoid bugs this way. And then if we have a proper hitbox, we can deal damage. There are a couple of ways we can go about that. We could emit a signal, but instead we're going to use the owner property. The owner of a node is the top node of a scene it's in. So if we go to the enemy scene and we create a herd box here, no matter where we create it in the tree, the owner will be the enemy node. So it's common to use the owner property when you create nodes that work as components. I'm going to um, do things like this. If the owner has a function, has a method called take damage, uh, then we're going to call it like this owner dot take damage and we're going to pass the hitbox dot damage value to that function. Uh, this is called doc typing. Uh, no matter the kind of node that is at the root of the scene, as long as it has a function called take damage, we can call that function, right? Uh, and we won't get errors, hopefully. This allows you to create crates, uh, monsters or anything, define that take damage function to attach a herd box to them and then they can take damage. And we're going to put that to good use in a second because we're going to now add the hit box and herd box to the sword and enemy. So uh, open the practice sword scene, a practice sword.tscn, and there select the sprite and we're going to add the my uh, hitbox node as a child of it because the sword needs to deal damage. It's a regular area and it needs a collision shape to function. So press Control A and add a collision shape 2D as a child of the node. Then in the inspector, click the empty slot next to shape and we're going to use a capsule shape 2D. Um, I'm going to rotate the capsule. You can press E to select the rotate tool. Click and drag with the control key down to rotate by uh, fixed increments and then press Q to go back to the selection tool and click the handles to resize the capsule. And then you can click and drag the capsule to cover the sword. Uh, now we created the hitbox as a child of the sprite because then we can rotate the sword and the hitbox follows. This is a thing we do often in games because that way the uh, collision box is going to follow the sprite or even the 3D mesh. Games like Dark Souls do things like these. Now, uh, what games also do typically is they make the collision shape larger than the sword. Why? Because when you attack and the shape or the, the sprite rotates very fast, uh, it may miss enemies at times and the players might get frustrated. So if you make the shape a bit larger, uh, it's going to be a bit easier to hit enemies.
And we have an animation player in there uh, with a slash animation that is going to play whenever you press the space bar uh, when running the practice scene. And so that will rotate the shape and the hitbox and deal damage to enemies. Well, to deal damage to enemies, we have to reopen the practice enemy scene or open it, select the sprite node or the enemy, whichever you prefer, and we're going to press Control A and add a My Herd Box node as a child of that. And there again, we need a collision shape for it to function. So press Control A, Collision Shape 2D, and we're going to add a capsule shape to that in the inspector. And you can uh, resize it to roughly cover the enemy like this. You can uh, click and drag over the shape to move it on top of clicking the handles to resize it. With that, we need a way uh, to see when we deal damage to enemies because the shapes are going to collide, but uh, we're not going to see that on the enemy. So we're going to add a script to the enemy node. So select the node, click the add script icon and create the script. Uh, there, we're going to use our animation player. So um, we're going to start by creating an already variable called animation player to store the animation player node. And remember that our herd box is going to try to call the take damage uh, function on our enemy, the owner of the scene. So we can define a function called take damage. It should take an amount uh, value that's going to be a whole number. And there we can just call animation player dot play hit. We prepared a hit animation on the enemy. If you want to see the damage, you can also call uh, print uh, and we can write damage, a comma and pass the amount and you'll see it in the output console. Then you can go back to the practice scene, press F6 to run it. And there you can control the sword with WASD. And when you press space, you're going to attack the enemies. Now, if you walk over the enemies, you'll see them take damage as well. Why is that? Well, it's because we need to disable our hitbox um, whenever we are not attacking. And we typically do that in the game's animation. So go back to practice sword, select the animation player and the slash animation. In the bottom right, click and drag on the zoom icon to zoom in on the timeline. And we're going to click in the top left in the, the gray area, uh, pull the cursor to the start of the animation, select the collision shape node, and then we're going to create a keyframe next to the disabled property. This is going to offer to create a reset, reset track and we can click create to confirm. So at the start of the slash animation, the collision shape will not be disabled. It will be enabled and deal damage. And we can move forward with the time cursor to around the end of the animation and then uh, right click in the animation track for the collision shape, click insert key, select the keyframe and click on uh, the checkbox next to value to disable the shape again. And if you play the animation, you will see at the end, the shape turns gray. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now we also need it to be disabled at the start of the game. And to do that, we have to click the animation drop down menu and go to the reset animation that was automatically created for us. It stores the default state of nodes. Um, you want to click the disabled key in the collision shape uh, track and in the inspector you want to turn it on. You want the shape to be disabled at the start of the game. This animation will automatically reset your sword uh, when starting the game, right? So you can now play the scene and press uh, space to attack and only when you are attacking will you damage the enemies. And this is how you create melee attacks in Godot. Now you know how to code attacks in your Godot games. The code is functional, but it doesn't feel very good. That's why in the next video, we will show you how to make attacks feel great. You will see all the little things that we layer to improve the feel of combat in games. This video is sponsored by our course. If you want to become a game developer and you have little programming experience, 
Our course, Learn to Code from Zero with Godot, will teach you everything you need to know to make your own games. It's the only course with interactive practices that you can do right in the engine. You can find the link to the course in the description below.